I'm Nat. And I'm Jack. And welcome to The Source. Happy Thursday, hope you all had a good fireworks night last night. And here is what's coming up on tonight's show. First up, everybody goes surfing in Bristol. Nat is down at the wave. And we go out proper like with Terry. He's out and about on the streets. I'm down at the Volunteer Tavern to check out the Autumn Food Theatre. And I find out all about this week's Africa Eye Film Festival. All coming up on today's show. Few of you may know, but Nat is learning to surf. I am, even though it's winter. And so I was very excited when I heard about the Wave project, which is an inland surf lake coming to Bristol round about next year. And you went down there to take a look, didn't you? I did. Let's go and have a look at the site and talk to the co-founder, Nick Hounsfield. I don't seem to be getting anywhere, Nick. <laughs> because we're in a field, Matt. <laughs> yes, yeah, good point. <laughs> All right, I'll give up. But I thought we were going to go surfing. So tell us where we are, what we're doing in a field. We are out uh, on the outskirts of um, North Bristol, east of Compton, um, on a, yeah, in the middle of a lovely field where we're hoping to build um, a wave garden as part of a project called The Wave. That's what we're doing here. This is Nick Hounsfield, who some of you may have seen earlier in the month when we had a beach clean down at Portishead Beach, didn't we? Yep, certainly did. It was good. Yeah, it was. And so um, the Wave Project is an amazing thing for Bristol to have, but I can pretty much see the sea from here. Um, why do we need a surf lake in Bristol? Well, the waves uh, off the coast of the UK are only good about 30% of the time, and a lot of people are travelling down through here to get down to Cornwall, to Devon, across to Wales. Um, and there's a fantastic seen here for surfers outdoor recreation and we figured it's the perfect place apart from being our hometown it's the perfect place to bring a project like this mm, congratulations so you got planning permission didn't you yeah from we got south gloss council yeah we got planning permission back in july um and uh yeah we're now just back in with investors and getting ready to do construction probably about january time okay so this field that we're sitting in here i mean literally are we going to be in the lake at this moment? We're on the edge of it right now, so yeah. yeah um, but uh, yeah, the plan is that the lake will be just sat behind us here and then there'll be a facilities building and around it will be some hopefully beautiful landscaping mm. um, and uh, the kind of place where people can come, be outdoors, get back into nature, but also have exercise and fun. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, we are in a really beautiful field and, uh, you know, how, what is the impact on, on nature and on the environment of the project? Yeah, well, we did uh, a, a, a really in-depth in uh, study on all the land around here and it's actually fairly low impact in terms of the ecology that's present here. And we hope that by the time we've finished uh, building out the scheme and doing all the planting and being really careful about that then actually it should increase the biodiversity in the area um, and most importantly allow people to actually interact with it a little bit more. Yeah so I've seen some of the plans because on your website um, remind me again of the the website or for anybody that's yeah, watching. Yeah it's thewavebristol.com. The wave yeah so yeah. And, and on there people can see uh, the plans for the site. And yeah absolutely. Yeah because yeah. it, it really does seem to be very in har harmony with nature. It's it's quintessentially a, a landscaping project with a lake in the middle of it rather than some big um, hardcore development. Um, it's minimal impact in its design and its build and that's part of the, the uh, provisor of the planning application is to make sure we're having as little impact on the environment whilst maximising the economic uplift and social uplift of the area. Mm, amazing, yeah. so uh, bringing jobs to the area? Yeah, all jobs will be created locally um, and also trying to tap into local supply chains uh, using Bristol companies uh, across the whole piece. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yeah. So who do you expect to be coming here? Well, um, the original inspiration for the whole project is to try and make sure that it's people of all ages, all backgrounds, all abilities. So if it does end up being a middle class playground, then I personally will feel like we failed. Um, we're really keen to make sure that the whole project reaches out into all the areas of Bristol and also um, obviously a heck of a lot of tourists hopefully coming down and using it as well. So we get a balance of a really good local community feel whilst also making sure that we're catering for, for people who are coming and visiting the area. Talking waves now, mm -hmm. what can people expect once the surf lake is built? I mean, what kind of waves are we talking about? Yeah, we're talking um, something that most of the time is going to be better than the UK, you know, which is hard to believe but um, 
the kind of waves we're looking at are going to be um, in the pro area is going to be way overhead height and barreling quite fast and then the waves will change shape as they come down the lake and become better for intermediate so that will be about chest to sort of shoulder high and then by the time it gets into the beginner area it will be sort of more about knee high so there should be something there for people of all abilities that's amazing yeah. so the wave just caters for different sort of abilities as it, as comes, it comes down along the lake as it comes down the lake yeah that's really good yeah. news yeah. and when you say barreling is that where the wave kind of curls over and you can go in like a tunnel in the tube yeah absolutely yeah so it, it it's it's the kind of wave that a surfer like me could only dream of getting once in a blue moon in the uk or you're having to get on a flight and go to somewhere you know um quite remote to go and get them yeah that's amazing yeah. so dates wise mm -hmm. um can i can i sort of pest you into some dates of yeah when, when are we going to get our the first dig and yeah i mean first dig we are hoping will will be breaking ground in january time um and then ideally we'd like to have the lake element finished by october next year so this time next year we should be surfing um and then by do a grand opening um for the whole site in march 2016 so it'd be lovely to tie up if we can with bristol green capital next year in an element of it but it'd be even greater if in 2016 we can show a proper legacy project which which does things bristol fashion mm, fantastic yeah. yeah well we really look forward to seeing it develop Cheers. over the coming months and year ahead mm -hmm. and uh following your story here on made in bristol tv so Great. thanks very much nick pleasure and we'll put all the details up on the website so if you want to watch its development and maybe even get involved then um we'll put all the details up there so thank you great thanks Wow, that really does look like an amazing project and we'll be following it as it goes, won't we? Yes, indeed. I can't wait for it to start. Um, now then, get your gloves on, get your hammers out. It's time for Terry, the odd job man. Welcome to Noel West in Bristol. One of St. Bristol's premier uh, council estates. I will be investigating all things in Noel West today. The people, what they want, what they don't want what they likes to do, what cider they likes to drink at five, uh, nine o'clock in the morning. All things like that. So stay with I, because Terry is going power to the people. So here I am outside the Fieldwood swimming pool. See, I thought it was open air, but it ain't because they did knock it down and I thought there was like an oasis and all that, but it wasn't, it was a building. But it is a shame that they knocked it down. There's nothing for these kiddies to do right now. It seems like they, they have to go outside of Bristol, people taking drugs because they're bored. This ain't the answer to the problems. This is Terry getting serious. They keep saying they're going to regenerate this area. But every time he gets a group up together, it all goes away again. He makes all these plans and nothing happens. So people are so despondent who makes the, who up here. makes the plans then? Well, we do it all between us, but, but, local people. But then you, and you ask the council to... No, well, they comes along to these meetings and talks about all these different things, sets us all up, and then just goes away and nothing never happens. So people are so despondent up here with the things that's going on that they don't even trust the council anyway. Mm. I would like people from Bristol City Council to be able to come to Norwest and put their money where their mouth is instead of keep taking give us something back. Thank you, you've heard it from the mouth. There we go. Please could you bring our swimming pool back? We need it. Thanks. She's well. heard it there. From the, <laughs> from Noel West, yeah. Phil Wood. This better not go on the telly. <laughs> so what can they do? I think they should make it an open air swimming pool. Dig, get a couple of diggers in. Dig a hole, put water in it. You'll give a hand, Terry, won't you? I'll give a hand, I would. Because I got tools in my van. And I will do that, because it needs it in Noel. Yeah, do not look down on Noel, look up in the air at Noel. Yeah? The people of Noel have got a good heart and lungs. Their lungs are pumping air into Bristol and oxygen. 
Terry never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> me neither. He's brilliant. I love him. Thanks, Terry. Um, so that's pretty much it for part one of the source today. But don't go away, because coming up after the break, I find out about the Africa Eye Film Festival. And I find out about the Autumn Food Theatre. Don't forget to tweet us at Made in Bristol TV, hashtag the source, or on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Made in Bristol Television. We'll see you after the break. Thank you.